present in the most complete form possible due to original technical difficulties. So, with Survivor Series just around the corner, WWE decided to take this very, very badly built Survivor Series card and change it around a little bit because they don't fucking care anymore. So, honestly, why should the remaining fans watching? I'm John Rectum with my review of WWE Raw from Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana wants me. One day I will stop referencing songs that likely nobody on this channel gets that isn't under the age of 40. And since I'm the age of 40, hooray, I can talk about old shit because I'm an old man. So, if you feel like you've been kept in the dark as to why a Raw review has been delayed, well, it's because I was in the dark on Monday. There was a bad wind and rainstorm that knocked the power out, and I had no way to get the on-demand service for my cable network working. So this is what I had to do. I basically had to watch the Hulu version, which is cut down and trimmed down to 90 minutes, and then watch YouTube clips to, again, present it in the most complete form possible. I do apologize for the delay in this review. I originally wasn't going to do it, but uh, some people on Twitter were like, hey, you know, give it a shot. Try right. You know, we really want to hear your thoughts. I will say that there were some good moments on this show, but as far as a go-home show for Survivor Series, at least a go-home Raw, because we still have SmackDown to get through. Holy fucking shit, I can only imagine how phoned in that'll be. This, this show was just a goddamn mess. None of the matches really meant anything, and... It was what it was. I've seen worse shows, but it, it was just, it was ridiculous. Anyway, so, um, recaps of Owens turning on Big E, because who doesn't love a thick Canadian man turning on a big, meaty African-American man who just wants to slap his meat repeatedly with other meaty men? I'm just gonna make this as uncomfortable as possible. So, Big E comes out to a pop. He wants revenge on KO, and also... You know, he, he's talking about Seth Rollins being on his plate and Roman Reigns being on his plate. He's got a really full plate of meaty men and thin men and also uh, Seth Rollins in whatever goddamn outfit he decides to wear this week. I don't fucking know what Seth Rollins is on about, but it is what it is. He says he's got plenty to give, including the leftovers, since Thanksgiving is just around the corner. Make sure to stuff your turkeys. One time I stuffed a turkey so much I ended up with way more cranberry sauce than I planned. Have fun on seeing that and always delete your search history. So, he mentioned about Roman Reigns, you know, and the Usos taking out uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods on consecutive weeks. And he says, you put your hands on my family, so I gotta beat your ass like you stole something or whatever. Man, if only people said the same thing to Chris Benoit, then we could have prevented it. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, here's KO, and he says, well, I didn't lie. I mean, yeah, I, it, I'm a bad guy, and sometimes I do bad things, but... I was trying to turn over a new queef. I think that's how he said it, but it might have been a new leaf, new maple leaf. Aha, because Canadian. Apologies to any Canadian fans that happen to be watching this. And he will beat the hell out of him. He will be the worst bad guy. It is what it is. He blasts Big E for his recent losses and everything since coming over to Raw. Remember, because we're less than a month out, or less than a month past the whole, you know, rosters becoming... Um, you know, being fully set after WWE Crown Jewel. They only mentioned about 80 million times in the lead-up to Crown Jewel, but it is what it is. So the people judging me can go to hell, and so can you. Um, and this, that any actions and any shit that takes place will be his fault. So the Usos then attack Big E, and, well, the first, they're, they're kind of beating down, uh, they're, they're beating down Big E and everything, and they're talking about how they're going to take down RK Bro at Survivor Series, which is the one night of the year where the superstars are Raw and SmackDown go head to head, except for the Royal Rumble and the brand to brand invitational and all, you know, any house show crossovers and whatever, but it's the one night of the year where they go head to head. <sighs> so, here's Riddle, and, Sonya comes out, my god, Sonya's beautiful and just so commanding and looks great in a suit, but Sonya coming out, killing it in this uh, heel authority figure role, says, you know, I'm calling this on the fly, fuck it, we'll do it live, technically you are live, and says we'll have a tag match, Rollins walks out in a sheepskin jacket robe and joins commentary, this match goes maybe three minutes, Rollins interferes, causes a DQ, and then Orton comes out and we have holla holla holla, a six man tag, it was fine, it was fine for what it was. Rollins and Riddle tangling will always be funny, given the fact that Rollins had issues with Riddle going back for a while. Big E gets the hot tag, and don't know why he does the apron bump. Uh, Riddle does get tagged. We get a melee and everything with people hitting moves. Most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. Surprise roll up, one, two, three. That, by the way, was after Rollins got Riddle from behind and rolled him up. And then an RKO on one of the Usos afterwards. And I think it was Jimmy. Um... Orton was yelling at Riddle as they went back. Big E um, says to Jay, Message received, and now I've got my own message in the form of this, and hits a big ending on Jay. 
I will say that Big E versus Roman Reigns ought to be pretty good. And um, I want all the smoke, and I'm ready for your Roman. Ray Katz with Sonya and Pierce uh, doing the five-way. Okay, doing the five-way with the women. Watching the women do the five-way to determine which one tops the other women. I'm just not going to get out of this. Liv topped four other women to get the victory. Stop thinking about it, Kier. I know you're thinking. You stop it. Get some help. And, um, and then... Uh, Piper Nevin, because that's her fucking name. She's someone like Bianca Belair and Triple H nodding in approval. 2003 Triple H, that is. So, um, Mackenzie, just as a backstage interviewer, apparently now on Raw, she uh, is interviewing Bianca, says the Piper, can you know, she knows where to find her. Why is Tamina here? Genuinely, a genuine question. Why is Tamina here? <clears throat> so, Bianca has an entrance. Then we cut to Owens, um, you know, being interviewed by Sarah, and Balor says, hey, it was supposed to be me and Rollins, but now it's going to be me and you. Oh, that's a, that's bad for you. And then Tamina took on Bianca. Piper is watching TV backstage like a normal human being. And a deep rear chin lock. Bad time pause there by Corey. And Tamina just did rest holds, and this was bad. KOD 1, 2, 3. Piper then shows up and says she'll be looking uh, for Bianca after Survivor Series. She's right there. You could have beat her ass, but whatever. Anyway, here's Becky. My fucking goodness. Becky, just in incredible shape, doing great shit, um, you know, since returning. I still am not happy with how they, you know, just completely destroyed Bianca's uh, momentum at SummerSlam. But that being said, Becky has been killing it her best. Kind of being a tweener here because she references Charlotte Flair's promo and everything, or Charlotte's promo, because they're not using the Flair name, even though we know he's her daughter. <laughs> Pretty much everything she built her career on. And Becky is enjoying this. I used to be your best friend. Now I'm your bitter anemone. Oh, see the anemones going by. And then shows footage of Charlotte's promo and all this. And then says, this is a, this is about personal legacy. It's like, I'm going to uh, beat the ever-living piss out of you. Okay, good. Good. That's good stuff. Here's Liv in red leather. You stop thinking, Kier, you were, you were fine during this, weren't you, Kier? Calling you out again. But no, Kier's really cool. So, yeah, Liv out in red leather and says that she wants to take the title from the person she admires the most, and that is Becky Lynch. And Becky says, well, I am I was giving you your moment last week, because Lord knows you don't get many of those in your career. And then they show footage of Talking Smack where Liv says, Becky's back. She said that I would be champion before she got back, and I'm not, but I hope to be champion soon. And Becky says, well, now that you're champion, or now that I'm champion, and I'm back, you're not going to get this title. Big time, big time Bex is just a big time bitch. They have a bit of a brief brawl uh, where Liv counters the, uh, the uh, manhandle slam and holds the title up, and that gets a pretty big pop. Liv ain't going to win the title, but it's at least a nice visual. <laughs> Orton tells Riddle to stop playing hero because he doesn't need a hero. He doesn't need a hero at the end of the night. He's got to be strong. He's got to be determined. And he's got to be stronger than light. I don't even think those are the right words. Fucking ruin that song. Man, the ghost of Bonnie Tyler is going to be upset. I'm assuming she's still alive, so now I feel like a dick. So, it's his fault for being laid out. And put, your, put our heads together. Orton is fed up. Orton is the voice of reason from the man that hears voices in his head. Which is the voice of reason in his head? Does it counsel him? Does it understand? Does it talk to him? Obviously, it's a voice in his head. So, recaps of Lashley laying out Dominic. I may have rewatched this ten times because anytime Dominic gets a shit beat out of him, it's a really, really good day. But as one of my friends will attest that I talk to almost every single day, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. How dare you accuse me of such? There is no proof. Ray yells at Pierce about Lashley versus Dominic. And um, Pierce tells uh, Ray to stay in his lane. His rain... Oh boy, that really was goddamn stupid. I'm only happy when it rains. I'm only happy when uh, Dominic's not on TV. I'm only happy when he's getting beat down. I'm only happy when it rains. Okay, enough of this silliness. Because, you know, everything's been so serious so far. He tell yeah, uh, Caucasian man tells a Hispanic man to stay in his lane in Indianapolis News at 10. You have a match uh, versus Lashley, because I want the best team for uh, Team Raw. Why is he suddenly on the Raw side when he appears on SmackDown and, nah! Why? Why? I don't mind, if you're having, brand, if you're having like one GM or whatever authority figure on each show, fine, but Sonya appeared, it's Anyway, so, um, 
Back to Pierce talking to Big E. I need you to be above the chaos and you will not interfere in Balor versus Owens tonight. So this is where stuff was cut from the Hulu feed. So this is what I ascertained from the YouTube clips. Profits and Alpha Bukademy, if you will. It's like Bukaki, only more disgusting because Majin Buu is still there. And his feud won't end. No, it will go on and on, my friends. Dawkins was selling his knee. And then Montez ends up getting the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling on Gable to surprise roll-up. And then it's a vignette on Veer, a Veernet, if you will, which that really sounds like some kind of weird, like, knockoff uh, thing from India or whatever. It's a Bollywood film. I've seen a few of those. They make no sense. Visually stunning, though. So anyway, he will dominate. Sure he will. So Zelina took on Nikki Ash. This was also cut. Dear God, Carmella would not stop screaming and yell the Oz Queen, and I wish that Carmella had never been hired by WWE and had gone to do something else. Acting, preferably in something that I would not be watching. So, uh, there was a tumble off the top, and they showed red, one, two, three. Now, Carmella taunts Rhea. That's always smart to do that, taunt somebody that I don't want to step on me. How dare you accuse me of such? Rhea then... Uh, dominates Carmella, just claws her in the back or whatever. You would think Carmella would be used to gain impact on the back, moving on from that. Man, she just she just felt like, the, you know, something running down her back or whatever. Corey would know about that, wouldn't Wouldn't they know it? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they know about that? So anyway, Rhea hits a nice normal lights and eventually hits Riptide. One, two, three. And then Zelina cuts a promo with that stupid goddamn accent. Rollins was backstage about to leave and says, Do not wake the baby. Don't wake the baby. Wake the baby. So anyway, he will lead Team Raw to victory, and then we'll take the title from Big E to take Raw to new heights. He doesn't have to try hard, because our ratings are in the fucking dirt. Owens and Balor had a match that was good as expected. Owens was a, you know, full-on dickish heel, as he is known to be, as far as in the ring. Apparently a nice guy outside of it. Um, there was a nice, di uh, you know, rolling senton by Owens, shades of uh, Mr. Anderson, Anderson, or Mr. Candy, Candy. And we get a drop down for two. Looks like Finn's about to get the victory, but nope, he gets crotched and hit with a vicious stunner. Very reminiscent of how Austin would hit the stunner before he got a little more, you know, creative with it. Just jerk down, right? Jerk down on a man's thick neck. Jerk, jerk down on Balor's thick neck. You stop thinking about Balor's thick neck. I never do. Anyway, Mania 38 hype video package thing in Dallas Cowboys Stadium, and they think they're going to fill that thing two nights in a row. That is adorable. I think they've got 50 to 55,000 each night, which will still be fine. Lashley says that he uh, should have been on Team Raw in the first place. Now he will dominate Ray. Also cut from the Hulu feed, Styles and Almost beat uh, Dolphin Root. <laughs> and Almost is just a slightly more mobile Ent. Um, hung. And Styles hits a phenomenal forearm. One, two, three. Survivor Series card rundown. Then we get recaps of Lashley dominating Dominic, which I always again enjoy seeing. That was fun. And then Ray with Dominic took on Lashley. No MVP. Wonder where MVP is. Um, maybe he just got the night off. Uh, Lashley was focused. Oh, no. That means he's going to lose. He's so fucking focused. God damn it. Jesus. Talking about Jeff Hardy being so focused like about three years ago. So anyway, um, Ray hit and run, but Lashley uses power. Uh, Dominic tries to distract, uh, being the useless twat that he is. And, but I don't hate him. Don't accuse me of such. And the post spot to uh, a break. And then Pierce is watching TV backstage like a normal human. Lashley toys with him. Eventually gets hit with a 619 after hitting into the middle turnbuckle. And then a splash. And then Lashley says, ha ha, nope. And then gets the hurt lock and taps Ray out. You see, now, if that had happened to Chris Benoit, then Daniel and Nancy would still be alive. Just attack the wrestling dad that was going to murder people. And anyway, so Ray's laid out. And Pierce is talking to Sarah. And he says, shit, we got a couple minutes left. I need to go kill time. And says, I want the best people on Team Raw, which he has said multiple times. By the way, Survivor Series is the one night of the year where Raw and SmackDown superstars go head-to-head -to, -head to establish brand white supremacy. I think that's how that works. Wait, that's just on Fox. And what ends up happening is Pierce comes out and says, well, I don't know. It's a person to be named because Ray is off the team. I can't possibly put Ray on this team. Why he has a, uh, an issue with the Mysterios, I don't know. And says, huh, I wonder who the person's going to be. Austin Theory suddenly shows up and lazily lays out uh, Dominic. That was hard to say. And says, hey, Austin Theory, I like your style. I like the cut of your jib. What's the jib? Ha <laughs> ha, promote that man. And he did. He's on Team Raw. 
So yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully no more issues and everything and I can just get back to doing the normal raw review. I hope you enjoyed this as full and complete version as possible. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.